Hey y'all, Tommy Post here. Um, putting up another video. Um, I might have touched on it on another video or not. I, I'm pretty sure I did, but I'm meeting more and more people that are buying these little these little import four-wheel drives. Now they had their big day, you know, probably you know, seven to ten years ago everybody and their brother was building little Suzuki Samurais, uh, little Geo trackers, stuff like that. But they're kind of they're slowly making a comeback, and, and I see that mainly because of price. You know, people want to be able to get out there in the woods, have a little bit of fun, but uh, they don't want to have to pay a million dollars for a Wrangler or, you know, something like that. So what you see is uh, a lot of people, at least up here in the mountains, uh, driving these little tiny micro four-wheel drives. So uh, I picked one up, uh, got a heck of a deal on it. The thing was in immaculate condition. Uh, owned by an older couple. Uh, it's got 90,000 original miles on it. Um, cool thing, uh, when I got it, it already had worn locking hubs on it, so that was a, a pretty good deal. Uh, this particular model, this is a 2002 um, Kia Sportage, and the older generations like this, they're true four-wheel drives rather than the newer ones, which are really just an all-wheel drive uh, type of deal. This actually has a manual transfer case in it with a four high, a four low, a neutral setting for towing or for coasting. Um, so it's it really reminds me a lot of my, my Jeep Wrangler. So anyhow, I wanted to uh, take you guys through my winch uh, install. Um, really, where, where we like to go off-roading, there's a lot of rocks. Uh, I'm up here in the mountains of Tennessee and um, there's lots of logging trails, you know, that are washed out really bad. And, uh, you know, this thing is not heavy duty enough um, that I want to stick lockers in it or anything. Because um, I'll just end up busting CVs out there or something like that. So the winch is the key. And I knew that back when I was doing a lot of mudding in Florida uh, with my Wrangler. So anyhow, I'm going to go ahead and uh, give you the, introdu the introduction <laughs> to, my, to my winches. Um, because really, you just need them. Alright, well this vehicle only weighs about 3,200 pounds, which uh, in all respects is pretty light. Uh, the Kia has a little bit more horsepower than the comparable Chevys and Suzukis. Uh, they come with a little 1.6, um, and I think they just barely make 100 horsepower. Uh, this little guy's got a Mazda... 2 liter engine in it uh, that makes 130 something horsepower but it's not about the horsepower really it's about your crawling gear you know if you get the thing down into 4 low let me see that transfer case right there you get her into 4 low and just let her eat she goes pretty good well winch number one now because it's lightweight I chose a smaller winch uh, this really is uh, an ATV uh, rated winch it's it's probably made for a heavier side-by-side -side, like a four-seater uh, this one was marketed as an extreme XD 4500 pound winch now this wasn't a money factor uh, I could have definitely afforded to stuff something bigger in there but in my experience is it takes a lot less of a tug than you would realize I mean, I've had this thing buried to the frame, and this little guy has, has pulled it right out. Um, the way it's mounted, when I first got it, it had little receivers already bolted to the frame. Now, that's because somebody must have had a tow bar on it or something, but, I mean, those things were box beam. Uh, they have, like, six through bolts through the frame itself. They're thick, and they're tough, so I just pretty much utilized what was there. I found some brackets on eBay because um, it didn't have the inserts with the with the little face uh, plates on them. It just had the receivers. So I was just scrolling around on eBay and I found a set from a Honda Accord. And oddly, they were a perfect fit. Slid them into place and that gave me two mounting points, one on each side. So from there, I took a piece of uh, steel box beam, really thick, heavy stuff and um, drilled through have uh, four bolts two on each side 
going through and into the box beam. Now, I don't know what the shear strength is of, you know, those nuts and, and the bolt itself, how much stretch it'll take, but I'll tell you what, four of them equally distributing weight, I'm of the opinion that there's no way I'm going to bust them off doing a straight pull. Um, I haven't tried it with a snatch block, but uh, I've had this thing almost maxed out to capacity uh, with a straight pull, single line. So I've got a, a winch plate here, and it's through bolted, but it's also welded. I welded uh, three sides of it. Actually, I might have even done the, the center up front, but in either case, it's not a gorgeous weld, but it's a strong weld. Uh, so that, that plate is welded to it. So really, you know, the strength of this plate is made for this size winch anyway. So I know that I've exceeded here what this plate's probably ever going to take. So I'm liking it. I'll talk about the winch later. Um, this thing was, like I said, bought off of eBay, paid $189 for it. This thing, by all rights, is an extremely quality winch. Everything about it has impressed me so far. It's got a two-horse motor uh, instead of a traditional 1.6, 1.7 uh, motor for that uh, weight capacity. Um, I'll save all that stuff for another video, but that's what we have going on up front. Now, that came with a thumb switch. Um, that was pretty much designed for, you know, ATV use, but, uh, I went ahead and grabbed a cheapy little remote control deal also off of eBay. I think that was like 12 bucks and wired that in. So it's just thumb button remote works great. Got some little key fobs. So really, you know, you get in the car, you're driving, you're doing your thing. You pretty much just grab this little guy out and turn it on and thumb your way in and out after you hook up. So no worries. Well, that's only half of the winch install. Of course, second half's not done yet, but there's second half. Second half is going to be a rear-facing winch. That little fella there is also a 4,500-pound winch, but what I did was I took a, took a gamble off eBay and paid $50 less for this winch than I did for the front winch, but all the specifications were exactly the same from one to the other. Uh, they were both uh, rated at a two-horse motor. They both came with uh, synthetic wire rope. Um, they both have, you know, the standard drum lock. Uh, this, they both have 136 to one. I believe was the was the ratio on the gearing inside. It's three-stage planetary. But anyhow, I want a rear-facing winch, and the reason being because I know that I tend to get into trouble, you know, tight little spots, and there's not always a place to pull from up front, and I like to go out alone a lot. So it's just a small insurance policy to have a rear-facing winch. Um, I haven't decided yet how I'm going to cut the carpet, going to weld something that may either connect across the two uh, sides of the roll bar. Um, there's box beam that's already welded into the body itself that I may try to run like a U-shaped, you know, a straight bar here, one that goes up the side of the package tray, one that goes up the other side of the package tray with uh, bolts that go through the factory uh, box beam that's inside of there. I'm inclined to believe that that's going to be plenty strong uh, to mount this thing inside the vehicle. It's going to have to have a remote battery back here. So we're going to throw a battery box over there. Um, and we're going to have stab switches on it. So when you're riding around, you can throw the stabs and complete the circuit. And the alternator will keep both batteries charged, front and rear. But then when you get out on the trail, close the stabs off and isolate this back battery. That way, if anything were to happen and you trash your front battery you just throw the stabs and at least you have 12 volts to get you home but it also gives you um, more more cranking amps throughout to be able to power these winches if you need to do it for any length of time so we just have a little control box mounted right in there 
and got some wires running right under there, under the back seat. I haven't completed the wiring yet. I just wanted to run it together real fast just to check operation and make sure this thing is at least turning so that you know I don't have to return it right out of the gate. But I don't have anything to tell you about the pulling capacity of this in comparison to the other one. But I promise you on upcoming videos when we take it out to the hunting property, it'll get dried. This one is it it came with a remote for it as well, but there's something weird that that remote's doing. It looks identical to the one that I got for the front, only this one's blue. I'm sure they all came from the same little factory in China. But this one, when you hit the button, there's a lag between the time it activates the solenoid and the time it deactivates the solenoid. So in other words, I could push the button to bump it, like if I just want to tense up the line a little bit, and it'll keep running for a half a second. And I don't like that. So, until I figure that out, I reached into the old bag of tricks that came with it and uh, decided to utilize the thumb switch that I think was made for like a four-wheel handlebar. So, wires run up front for this one. It's pretty simple. I just mounted it right there. That little fella pretty much made to go around a handlebar and you can just hit your thumb switch here to in or out doesn't leave you a whole lot for grabbing the emergency brake here but you give there's enough there that you can grab it and push so you know, sorry I'm a little bit distracted but just notice the uh, prisoners are out today hopefully cleaning up all the trash that these jackasses throw in my yard. So, anyhow, that's pretty much it. This thing works like a champ. I've already uh, hooked it up, thumbed the button, made sure it was uh, activating the winch itself. So, I will go stick it. See how it goes. Um, I've taken this thing down to the creek before, and I purposely drove into some pretty mucky, uh, marshy uh, kind of mud that's usually running along the banks. And that thing, um, it pretty much sunk down to the frame and hooked that front winch up and tightened it up, helped it, let it kind of troll a little bit in uh, four-wheel low, down in first gear. And it literally just, just pulled it right up out of that mud. And then I tried it again without uh, assisting at all. I just uh, put it in neutral, let it sit there, you know, down on the frame, and it popped it right up out of the hole. So, so far so good. I think that uh, it's going to suit the purpose that, that I've, I've put them on there for. Um, I don't need 120 pounds of winch on the front or the back of this thing, um, because honestly, that much weight on the nose of something this small is probably not the best anyway. Um, and the rear one, uh, the idea to finish it up is going to be that uh, that is going to be raised up enough that the wire rope can come straight through the tailgate. Tailgate's going to be uh, hard to do it one handed. Right. So, really. What does have to happen is I'm going to have to take the old spare tire. Yeah, it's got its own mind. Take the old spare tire and relocate the bracket so that I can move it off to one side or the other rather than right down the middle because I want to be able to cut through this already banged up tailgate and let that rope come right out of there, maybe mount the fair lead right to it. I'm certain it'll be plenty strong for a pull because most of them are going to be straight anyway. So that's it. I'll take you on my next ride out to the mountain. See what she does. But I do encourage trying these things out. Y'all have a good one.